So there was an accident about three years ago here in uh, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Uh, it happened in the town of East Petersburg. And it was, East Petersburg is just south of Mannheim, which is home to the Mannheim Auto Auction. And two people were killed in it. Uh, and the reason I'm doing the story now is because the driver is on trial. Uh, his trial just started. And this was a, a very uh, touching case to everybody in our area. And I want to talk about the trial, whether the driver did anything wrong. We know he, we know he did something wrong, uh, but or whether he actually did something criminal. And I'll go through. I'm actually going to drive to the scene of the accident, which obviously you don't see anything anymore. But I'll explain what happened, and you know everybody else can say what they think. Alright guys, so I'm here at the Mannheim Auto Auction and this is the largest auto auction in the world and um, it's also home to lots of other auctions but a driver from Florida, his name is Cesar Torres uh, had just picked up a load of cars here at Mannheim and was heading south, I don't know if he was heading to Florida I gotta assume that he was uh, when the accident occurred now, it actually occurred about, about two miles from here or so, and unfortunately it killed a, a young brother and sister, 21 years old and 18 years old. And, uh, you know, we got the story, they were, they were locals here, and it's a pretty sad story. Uh, but really, I just want to discuss, the driver was charged with quite a few things, and we'll get into that. Uh, this is just one of those accidents that has me questioning whether it was criminal or not. And this is probably a good thing that it has a jury trial because I think there's gonna have to be a lot of evidence on both sides of it. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna head down there towards the accident scene. So the road that I'm on here is Route 72 and Route 72 runs, uh, well, you can catch it up above Lebanon, Pennsylvania down uh, off of 81. Uh, but it runs down to 283 and continues down. It's a mostly mostly two-lane road through some small towns. And this section that I'm on here is a 55 mile an hour zone. Now the news reports say that the driver, Cesar Torres, was speeding when the accident happened. But from what I found out last night, his speed was actually between 31 and 35 miles an hour and it's a 25 mile an hour zone. Now, you see this speed limit here that I'm coming up on, this is where it drops down to 45, okay? And this is a little bit of a dense area. There's a quarry over to the right, some businesses on the left. Uh, and this actually is rush hour, or very close. It's actually 4.30 in the evening right now. Uh, so we're, pay we're passing the quarry here. And we're coming into the town of East Petersburg, and this is when the speed limit drops. And this first intersection that we're coming up on is where the accident happened. So here you see it's it's 45 miles an hour. Now here you have a sign that says it's going to drop to 25 miles an hour. This is also a bit of a blind corner. So this is exactly the way that Caesar was driving his truck. And now here, right before the light, is when it drops. But again, a bit of a blind quarter there. Now, I'm going south, so off to my right there. That is the west side. And uh, so Brandy and Lenny Kramer were traveling. It was about 8 p.m. Uh, brother and sister, Lenny's 18, Brandy's 21. They had a Ford Ranger. Uh, I believe Brandy was driving. I'm almost positive she was driving and came through the intersection. They said she was doing about seven miles an hour because the light had just changed. So, Caesar ran the red light, but if the light had just changed, did he actually, was he heavy and couldn't stop? I don't know, this is a bit of an uphill here. It seems like if he had been, I mean, he was only going 35, but right here is where the collision took place. And right there on the right where you see them flowers and a picture of Brandy and Lenny. 
is where the truck came to rest and caught on fire. Apparently both vehicles caught on fire. Uh, so he got hit basically T-boned, I believe T-boned or, or the front, whatever it was, at 35 miles an hour. So clearly the driver was in the wrong. But let's discuss the charges and you know this is is such a hard case and it's especially hard for those of us here that live in Lancaster County uh, you know because it was two young people two good young people the way we understand uh, were very loved and, and just taken too early uh, let's discuss what's going to happen with this trial so Cesar Torres was charged with two counts of involuntary manslaughter and two counts of homicide by vehicle I don't think that he can be found guilty of all of them I think it's a way that they I think the jury has to choose one or nothing and I don't actually know the sentences for both of them but I know there's a big difference between the two of them and just you know wait till the end of the video here when I get home and I will say what the sentences are but the question is this is such a horrific thing and it's so sad there are no winners in this uh, there was toxology reports he was not drinking neither were the kramers uh, in fact the way i understand the kramers had worked all day uh, their family they had a family business had to do with like clean outs and stuff and, and consignment sales and other things had worked all day i understand they were on their way to get some food or something else and it's been a little bit since i read the story but just a, a horrible story uh but the question is, and I don't have a side to this. So they say he was speeding, but I just showed you how the speed limit dropped. And if he was speeding, he was actually going six to 10 miles over the speed limit. Uh, the other thing is there's that blind corner there. I don't think that Brandy and, and Lenny ever had a chance of even seeing the truck with the way it's a blind corner there. So the big question is, and what this jury is going to have to decide, and I don't, I don't envy them at all, uh, is whether what he did was an accident or a truly criminal activity. You know, accidents happen, and almost every time an accident happens, you know, somebody's at fault, or two people are at fault, or, you know... I, I guess there are rare instances, but somebody's at fault. So, did this guy do something criminal? He ran a red light, but probably only by a couple seconds. Should have been better prepared by far. Um, and he was, he did not drop his speed fast enough on the dropping speed limit. Now, what did the Kramers do wrong? Nothing. Uh, it would appear they were stopped at the red light and started going. They were only going about seven miles an hour when it happened, uh, you know, which meant she had just started hitting the gas and moving. Again, I'm saying she, because I'm pretty sure she was driving. I will find that out till I get home. Uh, but yeah, when I get home here, I will go to my office here and I'll, I'll you know, tell you what the consequences are between the two. And this is really just one I can't give an opinion to, you know, tell me your opinion, guys, if you have one. I, I've i known this case for three years now, you know, just, you know, as somebody who reads the paper and stuff. And I, I just, man, I just feel horrible for everybody. Uh, on another note, the, um, the father's name is Len Kramer, and I will get the mother's name too, but had said that they were happy that he was charged but i don't believe in a malicious way i believe he says they want change i don't know what change they want i assume to some traffic laws to some other things and i have said this is kind of a catch-22 thing i have said for the longest time that yellow lights are not long enough for trucks uh, if you are at speed, now most of us will slow down or something if there's a chance that the light's going to change and we're in the truck. But if you're 80,000 pounds and you're at speed, a yellow light involves considerable brake pressure to stop by the time it turns red. Almost dangerous amounts of brake pressure. The problem is, 
All right, they should make it longer, 10 seconds. If they do that, cars will just run red lights, trucks too. Everybody will just run red lights because they'll be like, oh, I have all this time. <laughs> so that's something to think about. But uh, yeah, I know the Kramers, they're all in court. Apparently the whole family's in court. Uh, I kind of wanted to reach out to them, but obviously this is a rough time for them going through all this. Uh, if they happen to see this video or anybody knows anything about this case, you know, reach out to me and I probably will do a follow up on it. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to get home here and we'll go over what the, what the charges are, what the possible penalties are that he could be facing. So I got home here and I looked up the difference between, I was calling it vehicular homicide in Pennsylvania. It's called homicide by vehicle and involuntary manslaughter. I was also wondering why he was not charged with involuntary vehicular manslaughter. I know that is a thing in some states, uh, in Pennsylvania, it's not. So uh, at least from what I can tell. I thought one was way worse than the other, and I, I don't quite understand why he was charged with both, uh, two counts of each. And maybe if there's a lawyer that sees this or something, you know, you can reach out to me and, and let me know exactly why they would have done this. So homicide by vehicle is if you kill somebody with your vehicle uh, while breaking any law, including, you know, a road law. Uh, anything like that. Now it does, of course, if there's DUI involved and everything, that changes it a lot. But this is just homicide by vehicle. As far as we know, uh, what he did was break, uh, you know, break the laws of the road, speeding and running a red light. Involuntary manslaughter is a first degree felony. Homicide by vehicle is a, is a third degree felony, but carries up to seven years. Involuntary manslaughter is a first degree felony and carries up to five years from what I can tell. And the only really wording of different is, is that when it's done by a vehicle, if you did it while driving negligently, uh, which he did, but then he also did break the laws in the, the homicide by vehicle. So it's interesting, again, if anybody understands the, the laws, you know, better than me, uh, which would be just about anybody. All I did was read some stuff online as, as far as the laws. So, uh, it does say here that he also was charged obviously with, uh, failure to stop for a red light and driving at an unsafe speed. So this jury's got a lot to decide. Uh, I, I really don't have an opinion on the case or how it should end. What I, my opinion on the case is that I think that everybody all the lawmakers the da and everybody did the right thing here uh the proper charges were done they didn't overstep uh but two young people died and that does have to be answered for it definitely has to be done with a jury of 12 people our american justice system uh definitely has to be done with a jury who can sit there listen to the evidence form their own opinions and come to uh come to a result here so that's horrible for everybody a lot of lives ruined here a lot of lives ruined here uh two taken from us and a lot of lives ruined. so uh anyway uh, to the casper family i'm so sorry for your loss and i hope you know whatever results here you can find some kind of peace in it and uh i have no doubt just from what i've heard about you guys throughout the community and stuff that that you will uh, continue to move forward and make changes and, you know, honor uh, Brandy and Lenny's life. So, yeah, sad story here. I will probably do an update about it. And, uh, hey, guys, if, if you want to see more stories, I do stories about everything. But uh, you can like, subscribe, uh, comment. Please comment. I, I love to hear the comments, especially on something like this, because there's there's a lot of opinions. I'm sure. And, uh, yeah, if you prefer to reach out to me, email, you can email me at finchresources at gmail.com. You can also find me on, uh, Facebook or Instagram under the trucking resources name. Um, also if the Casper family happens to see this, I would love to hear the changes that you're working on. I know it has been mentioned before, so, uh, I would love to hear from you guys and, you know, see if we can get any kind of positivity out of this horrible situation. So anyway, guys, I'll catch you on the next one.